G'day guys, welcome back again. Now, I'm going to do the first of my set of eight in my placemats. So I'm using my box board or thick card and I'm going to do two shades of red, black and white. Then I'll do two shades of blue, black and white, two shades of green, black and white, two shades of purple, black and white, etc, etc. You get the picture. And then I'll have a lovely set of eight placemats. And I'm going to laminate these cards so that they are, you know, you can wipe them over if you spill anything on them. So that's what I'm going to do. In my previous attempts at this, with these colours, I had gold in it and I really didn't like the gold. It sort of, oh, I don't know. It just kind of looked a bit yellow and a little bit bronze. It wasn't what I was going for. So I'm going to go for two shades of red. I've got a cool red and a warm red. I'm going to put a little bit of black in the bottom first. And then I'm going to go with my cool red. I'm just going to pour it down the side. Mix is pretty thick. Red always thickens up. I'm going to add a touch of water to it. Always thickens up as it's been sitting there. So everyone says to me, what do you do with your cards after you've poured on them? You can frame them, you can laminate them, you can put them in a display book, whatever you want to do with them really. Now I'm going to put a little bit of black, just a touch, and then I'm going to go with my orange next, just to separate those two. Well, it's a warm red, not really an orange. And then I'm going to go with the white and then the black. I don't want the red next to the white because I'm going to get pink, so a little bit of black. And then again with the red. Hopefully this will work. A little bit of black. Whoops, nearly tipped it over. Warm red. It's kind of like a dark orange, really. And the white again. A little bit of black. Finish off the red. So I think I've got three layers here of each. We'll see how that goes. I've still got the same amount of black in as my other colours, but a little bit of black between each one just to try and separate them a little bit. And the rest of my orangey colour, not much left in that one. So these, make, these paints are pretty thick. I'm going one to one, one part pouring medium to one part paint. And as you can see, they're quite thick. They leave a, a good mound on top of the cup when I pour the paint in. And my pouring medium is my 321. So it's Floetrol PVA glue and pouring medium. And a little bit of white. And a little bit more black. Finish it off. I know the black and white are going to go grey, but it's better than having the white next to the red, I think. And having pink. Okay. So I've got... 500 mils of mixed paint there. That was the warm red there with the cool red and black and white. Okay, now I'm going to pour in the middle and I'm going to do is circles, but I'm going to do bigger circles this time. I'm still finding that my rings are too close together. I want them to be bigger, wider rings, more spread out. So I'm going to try bigger circle and I'm going to go close to the card so that I can I'm not getting too much of a wobble it's still wobbling but can't do much about that maybe I'll slow down a bit it's kind of folding on top of itself there we go that's working so I'm doing bigger circles Nice and close to the card. See how it's kind of just folding in on top of itself? Like that. So hopefully these circles are big enough to create the look that I'm after. So round and round. I guess they're about an inch 
wide, my circles, two and a half centimetres, three centimetres maybe. Starting to get a little bit muddy now in the middle because you know, I'm, I'm moving my jug, so starting to get a little bit muddy. I might stop there because in the bottom there, there's pretty much just black. A little bit of mud that's turning into mud because the more I swish this, the more the colours are mixing in the bottom. So out here, I've got beautiful colours and in the middle, it's got a little bit more muddy. <clears throat> All right. Torch it. And the only thing I think to get away from that is doing two separate cups, pouring it, maybe in a smaller jug, pouring it out so I've got these nice bright colours, stopping, pouring the next one out because you can see the difference. Anyway, we'll see what it looks like when it's uh, stretched out. There goes my flamethrower again. It's not behaving. You can sit out there and have some time out. Not behaving. Okay, so don't really like this as much. It's a bit, as I said, a little bit muddy. So let's get that corner off first. I have got a little bit of white left just in case I need to put some white on my corners, but I've got enough paint that I should be able to tip over each corner. And I'm just going to put some white there just to help it along. I mean, obviously it wants to go off the side and I don't want to lose too much. So it looks like with that little white corner for now. If I don't like it, I can get rid of it later on. Okay, let's go for this corner next. Really like this here, these bright colours. And then it's, as I said, it's gone muddy in the middle. It could be my black and white together as well. But here, I mean, they've stayed separate there, haven't they? So who knows? Off we go to that corner. Put a little bit of white on it there as well. I don't have any black left, so we're going with the white. Doesn't matter what colour you use, just use a contrasting colour for your corners. And then if you don't have if you don't manage to stretch it right over, that's okay. A little bit of a contrasting colour in the middle is quite pretty, so bring your weight back to the centre before you go for the next corner. know about this these colors it's sort of turning burgundy anyway we'll see what happens once I've stretched it out I may have to do that two cup pour as I said earlier maybe that's the only way to get my nice defined colors so off to the bottom and towards you at the same time And I'll leave a little bit of white on the corners just so that they all match. Come back into the middle again. It's more of a burgundy, isn't it, than a red? Moving really slowly, paint's really thick, that's okay, no rush, it's not a race. I am losing my lovely vibrant, vibrant, vibrant colours there, my red and my orange. Just over the side there. little bit of white that's all four corners done okay off we go 
hope you can still see this. I'm losing all my red. Oh no, my lovely red. All right, I'll turn it around again so I can tilt towards you. So I'm just bringing this area now, trying to get the black into the center just a little bit more. You don't have to do that. You don't have to center it. But I just want to stretch these out a little bit, so I'm going to center it. See, I'm holding that on a 45 degree angle. And the paint's just moving really slowly. Now, just playing with the composition just a little bit, seeing if I can bring some of this red down. I'll turn it that way so it's towards the light. So I just want to bring some of this red down a little bit. Might be a touch too thick, not sure yet. But I'm liking the results, that's for sure. Now I just want to bring this down just a little bit. I think that'll do. All right, let's clean up these at the bottom here so you can see where the actual card finishes because there was paint on my cookie cooling rack there and it's a bit hard to see where the card ends if it's got paint all over it. Just need a little bit more white on that corner. I'm liking these white corners. It's a nice contrast to that really dark center. And I do like a little bit of the plain color on the, on the corners. It doesn't have to all be so busy. In my opinion, there's no right or wrong, but it's my opinion on, on how I like it. But you guys do, you know, whatever you like. You don't have to center the black bit in the middle. You can have it in the corner here, the black bit there, and then all your lines going out that way. So just whatever you like. Okay, so what do you think of that? Is that better, having the wider uh, ribbons? I'll show you the previous one. I'll just take these messy gloves off so you can see the difference. So this was the one that I did in the same mix, the three to one with the red and the gold in it. And I did the little circles. So this one, I did the bigger circles. Can you see much difference? Which do you prefer? <laughs> this one's throwing a little bur bit of burgundy and pink, isn't it? And then you got that pop of the lighter red in there, the orange. So it's still pretty. I mean, I. I guess it just wasn't what I was imagining. I thought it would be more bright red and bright orange, like this orange or red here. But the gold's kind of making it go a bit orange anyway. But uh, yeah, I quite like it. Put that one away. Okay, so I think this will be the first one. This can be my red one. And as I said, I'll do a different color to make up my set of eight. Just pop any bubbles that are there. And um, I'll take you in for a close-up. Oops, I just want to zoom. There it goes. There we go, that's better. That's, how's that looking? See, it's kind of burgundy, isn't it? More, the red and the black's turned into a burgundy. Um, and then we've got some grey in there from the black and the white. But that's what you get from fluid art, you know? Your, your colours are liquid, they're going to blend together. So, 
we have to just even though it's not exactly what we had envisaged it's still beautiful I think and um, maybe I'll try the two jugs next time and see if I can get the brighter contrasting colors okay hope you're enjoying my set of eight number one down seven to go woohoo see you for the next one bye for now